everybody. In uh, Baltimore's early history, there was a merchant and philanthropist named Enoch Pratt, and he dedicated a little bit of his money to build the first central library here in Baltimore. In 1933, that, that central branch was not big enough. It was small. It's actually a church now. And he decided to build a bigger one because uh, Baltimore is not only Charm City, but it's the city that reads. I bet you didn't know that. Well, in 1933, they built this here. It's the Central Branch. I'm gonna nerd out today. This is what I do. And this is one of my favorite libraries, one of the coolest ones, just because it's old and it has a lot, a lot to it. it has a lot of history to it. And uh, you may not have known this, but there is no Baltimore Library. Because of Enoch Pratt's donation and dedication to the city reading and having a library, it's called the Enoch Pratt Library System. So if you talk about the Enoch Pratt Library, you're not talking about one branch, you're talking about all of Baltimore's libraries. The former CEO of Enoch Pratt Library, her name is Carla Hayden. She is now the head of the Library of Congress in DC. So uh, let's go in and take a look. How you doing, brother? As you can see, they have the computer resources as most libraries have. What I've always thought was cool was that they had a giant chessboard. Let's go check it out. This massive chessboard. expert chess players over there. I'm just gonna show you a quick tour of this place. I don't know all the history, but I'm gonna to try to share what's relevant. More than anything, the reason why I like this is a beautiful building. This is nothing like the one in Seattle, but this is old and uh, it's pretty large. And from what I hear, there's a lot of floors under that we're not allowed to go to. So let's check it out. All right, but you, so you say there are three floors below us? Yeah. There's, now, were they original to the building? I think so, yeah, because there's, I, mean, I think there's things a little bit down there that I haven't seen. Um, like, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I guarantee there's like a bomb shelter down there somewhere, too. Oh, well, do you think that's originally what it was for? No, I think that was just something that was like built into the substructure. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's like three levels of, uh, uh, stacks down there. And so there's... you're not in any danger of losing space, running out of space here? No. Yeah, that seems uh, pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, you come in here, you see you already have how many levels? You have this ground level, then you have that one. There, and then there's a third that ha that it's another, mostly just offices, but there's also a uh, auditorium out there that's sometimes used for public speakers. And then three whole floors with stacks, and they're, most of the books are older books. Mostly, yeah. And like sometimes that's just where we're making space on these public shelves and shifting uh -huh. stuff down to make room for new books. Gotcha. Um, Can I ask you, what's the oldest book you've come across? Oldest one I've handled. Hey. How you doing, buddy? Good. Um, it was by chance. Uh, it was like I, it was just randomly sitting on a book cart in a workroom down there too. Uh, I, I, like it was a uh, 1832 printing of. This book is like an interview of one of the last surviving participants in the Boston Tea Party. Really? Yeah. Holy moly. Which I promptly took over the special collections. Like, hey, you should probably hold on to this. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't just be sitting on the shelves. It's about 200 years old. Gotcha. That's cool. Well, I really like this one. I appreciate you sharing with me, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cool. Take care, man. You too. See you. Welcome back to Baltimore. Thanks a lot.
We're going to head up to the second floor. We're going to check out exhibit for uh, Edgar Allan Poe, who you know was famous here in Baltimore. So Edgar Allan Poe was a uh, famous poet in the past. He was uh, based here out in Baltimore, and he's most famous for the Raven, which the Baltimore Ravens are named after. Well, they have a little exhibit up here talking about his life. And kind of displaying some of his most popular works. Baltimore's proud of him, obviously. No, I admittedly have not been back to this section, but looks like some cool things back here. Looks like an old picture of Edgar Allan Poe. Stereoscope viewer. Reminds me of those little things that kids click and it switches views, except it only has one view. It's a picture of Enoch Pratt. I'm gonna switch my beard to that style. And here we are in the African American room. And now, the room is dedicated to and oriented towards African-American culture. Remember, um, most American, African-American people were, their ancestors were brought over as slaves. So we can't have a, you know, a St. Patrick's Day parade or, you know, a, a parade or any sort of celebration for a particular country. The one culture we share is that we're black and our ancestors were slaves, so. So it's a room that sort of has culture to teach people about, I guess, African American history. Baltimore, Baltimore is 63% black. So, um, you know, there's another reason why they would have a room for, for African Americans. So a lot of the older books are off limits, but here is an older room called the Angel Minkin Collection. I can't go in there, but I can put the camera up and we can look in there. He, H. H. L. Minkin, was a journalist from Baltimore um, that was well known, I guess, countrywide. But there you go. So it's an old curtains and room that we can't check out. It's probably better to close it off. Uh, the library is pretty big, but a lot of it is cut off because, like I said, it's old and a lot of the material and the building is sensitive.
to people touching and manipulating. So they try to protect it from people destroying it. Speaking of that, I was just talking about one of these. This is not the branch that was closest to me and I really didn't have too many times that I really need to go here. When I was going to UMBC, there were certain books that were only at this branch, so I would come here, especially some of the older ones. But uh, I really liked it, and when I had the books, I didn't leave. I just stayed here and researched. I mean, there's just books galore. And I like the fact that this is not just, I like the fact that this is not just Charm City, it's the city that reads. Now, I don't know how true that is, and, how, and if lots of people like to read, but, uh, I do so this place has like a certain smell to it because it's so old it has you can smell the old books and the old shelves and the old building frankly it's just uh, it's like a stark difference between here and the one in Seattle way different I'm glad to be able to show it to you I wish I could show you more yeah yeah That's the library for you. Now for an old building built and finished in 1933, this is a pretty large building. Now check this out, I'm gonna cross the street and I'm gonna show you how big this place is. By the way, there's the Baltimore Basilica. So that's the head of the Catholic Church here in Baltimore. That's where uh, the Baltimore Cardinal does his, does his thing. America's first cathedral. But let's check out the library. So the library, Enoch Pratt Central Library, is a block long. It's a block long. And uh, as the gentleman in there told me, the librarian, there's three, there's three levels under here, this wild, wide, full of old books. Man, I would love to go under there and check that out. But uh, yeah, I've tried, I've tried before and they won't let me. You know, it's nothing. They'll bring the they'll they'll bring the books out for you, but there's no uh, there's no going down there. I guess I have to go get a degree in being a librarian and uh, apply for a job here to do it. So anyway, that's Enoch Pratt, and uh, I'm glad I got to tell you take you on a little quick tour. If you enjoyed the video, press the like button, follow me uh, on Instagram, share the video. And uh, stay tuned because I got some fun stuff going on uh, pretty soon. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to do something really fun. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned. Love you guys. See you soon.